Hey guys, Parallel here, and welcome to Star Trek Online. Today I'd like to do another build video, and this time it is going to be the Fleet Mogai Heavy Warbird Tier 6. I am here on my Romulan Tactical Officer, and so in this video I'll go through the um, full build. I'll show all my equipment. Um, quickly go through my skills and specializations, show the traits I'm using, uh, my bridge officers, and my duty officers as well. Then we will take a look at the ship in the tailor, and then head out and see how this build performs in uh, Argala System Patrol, and I guess also a, uh, I'll do a pickup group of um, ISA. So, let's get started here. So. This is the Fleet Mogai Heavy Warbird. It is the fleet version of the Moragu uh, Heavy Warbird that uh, was just recently released in the Sea Store. Um, as it was part of the Tier 6 Battlecruiser package. Um, and this is the fleet version of that ship. So it actually has one extra console slot over that ship, and you can see here it actually doesn't come with a starship trait either. If you want to be able to get the starship trait, you have to get the Z Store version. So let's go ahead and get into the build here. For this build, I'm actually going to be using uh, beam arrays. Um, this ship does come with a four forward and three aft weapon layout. Um, so you could also go with the dual beam banks up front, which I've actually run uh, as well. It works quite well. In this case, I do want to try a beam build, because I'm actually also going to try a, a another build here without using the uh, Borg two-piece. Um, I had a lot of success with that on my Nandi uh, warship, and I want to give it a try here on this uh, Mogai. So yes, I am continuing to use my anti-proton beam arrays. Um, that's that's the only energy type I really have upgraded to tier 14, and um, so that's what I'm going with for this build. Uh, you can see the modifiers again are not perfect. I'm only running. I have one crit D3, crit H, and then the rest of them are all uh, crit D2, crit H2. And in the rear, crit D3, crit H, and I also have. Uh, one here that's only well pretty ter terrible mods honestly on this one has an accuracy so but those are the beam arrays I'm running um, for the space set I am using the Iconian resistance set uh, three pieces here um, and let me do a uh, let me just mouse over them here first I guess and I'll show the set bonus that I'm going for so here's the deflector array the uh, impulse engines and shields and for the warp core, I'm going with the Thorin Infused Singularity Core, which gives you the. Um, re uh, where is it? Yeah, increased base resistance rate to all power levels. So it gives you a resistance to power drain from your weapons. So this is the Spire Warp Core, uh, or Singularity Core. Um, so for the three-piece Iconian, um, let's look at info here. Uh, the three-piece Iconian set gives you this set bonus here, Energy Augmentation Actuator, and this is a really great set bonus, um, and which is why the Iconian set is so popular right now. It gives you a 5% chance when firing all energy weapons to increase 15% uh, increase to all energy damage for eight seconds and it hits all of your allies as well and it stacks three times so that's a nice a very nice three-piece bonus for both you and your team um, for my devices i'm using the temporal negotiator from the delta recruit event and then the nimbus pirate stress call now onto the consoles so this is the fleet version so it has four uh, engineering two science and five tactical slots um, and here you can see I also have the, um, or I previously bought the Valdor um, in order to get this console here, which is the Shield Absorptive Frequency Generator. Um, 
this console is um, is a really great Romulan console. Um, only Romulans can get it because it comes off the Valdor Warbird, um, which is a lower tier ship, but it's worth it to buy it, that ship just to get this console. And this console, as you can see, when any um, shield facing is below 90 percent, 2.5 percent chance for all energy weapons to restore shields for 200 percent of the outgoing damage. So basically this gives you lots and lots of he shield healing just by, you know, um, just by f firing your weapons and doing damage. So, And it's always nice to have a defensive console that scales with your offense. So the more damage you do, the more that the uh, healing will scale for your shields. So just an awesome console. I mean, almost every Romulan build really can benefit from this. But what's even greater is that this console here, the Ablative Hazard Shielding, this is the console that actually came with the Moragu, which is the sea store version of this ship. And when you slot both of these together, it gives you a two-piece set bonus that gives, uh, where is it here, Enhanced Weapon Systems Efficiency. So it gives you five weapon power and plus 25 resistance to weapon power drain. Again, very good. So stack up your resistance here, along with the resistance from your warp core, and you're doing pretty good. So your weapons are draining less power. I also am running the uh, Plasmonic Leech, um, also very helpful for Romulans who have you know low base uh, power levels, so very nice to have. And then for another console, I'm running the Zero Point Energy Conduit for a little bit of extra crit and power. I don't really have uh, I don't have any of the uh, low B, the really good low B uh, consoles like the, um, what is it, Tachyo Kinetic Converter or the, the Bio Neural Circuits. I don't have either of those. Um, if you do, that'd be probably preferable to put here. But that's the other console I've got. And in my science consoles, I'm running two of the plasma generating weapon uh, signature nullifiers that give you the plasma proc to your weapons, and I'm running them with the flow mod which increases the amount of energy you get from your plasmonic leech. In the tactical consoles, I'm just running the uh, vulnerability locators um, with plus AP damage. Got five of those stacked up. So that's buffing all the weapons here. So that is the build. Um, I'm expecting it to do pretty well. Um, the fleet version does benefit from the extra cons uh, science console, which is nice, so you can get that second uh, plasma console in there. Now, um, I'm just going to show my skills here real quick so you can see, and I'll scroll down. Um, pretty standard build. Always make sure you get your electroplasma systems up. Um, you can see I've got all of energy weapons maxed out. Um, attack patterns maxed out. Um, I guess the only other thing is to get your flow caps up if you're running a plasmonic leech. This Getting the skill maxed out is critical for that. Otherwise, pretty standard build. For specializations, <clears throat> I'm running uh, 20 points into intelligence for all the space abilities. And I also have a smattering of uh, points here in the pilot, mostly to get rock and roll. Um, I am currently trying to invest more in here to unlock the pedal to the metal trait, but I don't have that yet. All right, for my traits, I'm running accurate and elusive, which gives you your 10% accuracy and 10% defense, two solid traits. Of course, running Romulan operative, the OP, OP trait for Romulans gives you crit chance and severity. Um, I'm running the beam barrage trait. Um, Another very good trait for any beam build, um, pretty much, uh, I mean, just a, one of the top traits, honestly, for a beam build. You get this from getting your um, beam crafting skill to rank 15, unlocks this trait. Uh, I'm also running Warp Theorist just to help with a little bit with power levels and uh, improves your EPS, which is good. Running Last Ditch Effort, you know, just for the extra buff to your uh, go down fighting. Honestly, I don't have much of anything better to run there, so that's why I'm running it. I do run anchored, um, but uh, I 
I'm not sure how much I'll use to take advantage of that in the ship, but I do like to run it um, just in case I do stand still. It gives you that nice uh, stacking damage bonus. Running point blank shot. Um, again, for the damage bonus when you're up close to your target. Very good trait. That was recently released as part of the last uh, featured episode. And crippling fire. Um, I just run this trait just because, honestly, I don't have anything else to run. I don't have... Uh, yeah, I don't have any of the other lockbox traits or anything that would probably be, you know, be far superior to this, but uh, I am running that. For the starship traits, I am running all hands on deck. Probably the top trait right now for me in the game. I love this on every build. The recharge time for science and captain abilities is great. Uh, I'm running the emergency weapon cycle, um, which gives you... Um, which gives you a reduction to your power drain. It also gives you this 10% firing ha cycle haste. Honestly, I've heard that this isn't even working right now, but uh, that's not the main reason to get this. The main reason is to for that minus weapon power cost. So stacking that with your warp core and with your um, my two-piece bonus from the Valdor set um, should be quite a nice reduction on weapon power usage. I'm hoping that my phaser power will be kept nice and high during the firing cycle, even though I'm not running the Borg two-piece. I am also running greedy emitters, um, and to trigger this, I have a uh, tachyon beam slotted on one of my buffs. Um, this also, again, gives you a, a very large weapon power reduction cost for 10 seconds out of every 30 seconds, so a pretty good trait. And I'm also running Improved Brace for Impact, just as a defensive trait. I like to have that just, you know, for it gives you a large uh, temporary hit point buffer uh, when you use your evasive maneuvers. Or not evasive maneuvers, but a Brace for Impact. Um, and honestly, I don't have any other really good traits on my Romulan side, so... I decided to choose that as a defensive trait. For my reputation traits, I'm of course running precision for the 4% crit, advanced targeting for the 16% crit severity, the aux power configuration offensive, the Nukara trait. Um, I do run a high aux power, well as high as I can get it on the Romulan side. Um, just for the extra damage bonus this gives, which is a very good damage bonus. It is a category 2 bonus, which makes it very good. Stacks on top of all of your other bonuses, very worth it. When I go out to space, we can take a look at that and see the percentage it actually gives. And in one of the comments in one of my videos, someone recommended I give this trait a try. Um, this is the new trait from the Iconian reputation at, I can't remember if it was at tier 4 or tier 2, but it um, gives you 2.5% of your outgoing damage as a hull heal, and it can trigger up to 10 times per second. Which sounds pretty decent. Like I said, anything that scales healing based on your DPS is a good thing. So when you max out your DPS, you're giving yourself some more hull heals. Um, so I'll give this a try. I'd like to actually, I've never actually, I've tried it before, um, but I've never actually done it in a run where I've used a combat log reader to actually parse out and see how much healing it actually did. So I'll try to do that in my run today and see how this performs. For the active reputation, I'm just running all four of the active space reputation abilities. Alright, so let's take a look at the bridge officers. So this ship does have interesting uh, options for your bridge officer seating. First off here, in the first slot, it gives you a Lieutenant Commander Universal with uh, hybrid intel. So Universal Hybrid Intel. Very cool uh, seat there. I'm not sure if there's any other ships that have that a Universal that is also hybrid to uh, intel. But that gives you lots of different options, um, honestly. You could slot all kinds of officers in here and get that intelligence slot, uh, you know, slot that intelligence ability. So here you can see um, this ship is a bit short on the science abilities and only has an ensign science. So I used this um, universal slot for the my with my science slash intelligence officer. 
so I can run science team one and hazard emitters two and then override subsystem safeties as my intelligence ability. Very very powerful ability for uh, getting a lot of burst out of your um, burst out of your a lot of just a lot of burst damage because it uh, increases your power your max power level by 50 for you know temporarily and then it dies back down to zero over time but while it's increasing your max power by 50 is I believe a hundred percent damage bonus because I think it's two percent yeah I think it's two percent damage bonus for every one energy you are above 50 so pretty solid solid damage bonus and you'll see when you click this your 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 weapons just start critting for insane amounts um, for my commander seat here is a commander tactical I am running uh, yeah I'm running an attack team uh, attack pattern beta fire at will 3 and omega 3 and in my next seat here is the lieutenant tactical. I'm running a, another tactical team. I like to cycle those so their one's always going. And then I'm using the beam uh, fire at will 2. For my engineer is a lieutenant commander and in this case I am running emergency power to shields, engineering team 2, and emergency power to weapons 3. And when I show my DOFs, you'll see I'm actually running a Drake build. So I'm running three damage control engineers to keep the emergency power to shields and emergency power to weapons always cycling. So with those two going, I should have pretty close to 100% uptime. For my Ensign Science here in the last seat, I am put in just a tier 1 tachyon beam. Not really concerned about this using this for shield drain. All I'm using this for is to trigger the greedy emitters trait. And keep that uh, yeah keep the energy power from my weapon reduction going so there's that let's take a look at the boffs so I'm running agent neural um, or neural I'm not quite sure how to say that uh, he is a shield distribution officer and I'm pretty sure I got this guy out of the Delta operations pack um, he does give when your attack pattern beta power is going uh, 2% you get 2% of your hull healed when firing energy weapons so heal 2.2% of your hull on each shot not super great but I honestly don't have any really good boffs I don't have um, I don't have Marion Francis I don't have uh, what's the one with uh, the tactical the um, reduction in your attack patterns I'm forgetting the guy's name Zamok, I believe. Uh, I'm not running. Uh, I don't have any of those super expensive DOFs, so uh, these are the ones that I'm running. I do have the con officer for the improvement to um, tactical team and reduce of the recharge team, re recharge time on tactical team. And then here are my three damage control engineers. Um, each one gives you a 30% chance to uh, reduce the cooldown on your emergency power uh, abilities. So each time one of these emergency power abilities go off, um, you get three 30% chance rolls to reduce the uh, recharge time on both of them. So uh, basically, as each of these trigger, uh, odds are that you know each of these trigger every 15 seconds. So odds are that the the reduction you get from one of these uh, procs from your damage control engineers, I believe it's a 30% chance, so 3 times 30% chance, 2 times prepare every 30 seconds, um, gives you a pretty high percentage chance of always having these two abilities running. Um, it's not 100%, uh, but yeah, it's hard to, I mean the only way to guarantee you get these up, have these up 100% of the time is if you run two copies of each one. But with the Drake build, with the three damage control engineers, it's pretty close to 100%, and it saves you a lot of engineering slots. And on ships like this, without very many, you really can't run a, uh, you know, run two copies of those two abilities. So, so there it is. That is my build. I am pretty excited to give this a try. I have not tried this build yet in an ISA. Um, 
I had been previous to this video I was using my dual beam build, but this one I want to try the beam array build with the uh, greedy emitters and see how it does. Oh, actually the... So let's take a look at the ship in the tailor. Um, before we go in, I will... Let me turn off the Iconian shield here so we can get a look at the ship. So yeah, this is the... This is the Mogai. It is a really, really nice looking ship. I've loved the look of this ship. This was ship was first shown, I believe it was in, what movie was it? I think Star Trek Nemesis movie is when this was shown. Um, so I, it is a canon ship, and it is quite amazing looking. In fact, I think, I don't know, I would say it's my favorite, but I think the D-Deradex is still the number one looking Romulan ship. But this is a close second. So let's take a look here. Now you do have quite a few customization options here. You've got, uh, let's take a look at the skins. You've got your two Riemann skins. That one actually looks really cool, Riemann 1. Here is the Fleet skin that you get, and Fleet 2. It was a little bit too bright for my liking. I do like the Fleet, Fleet 1 skin though. You get your standard Romulan skins, Romulan Veteran skin, and the Upgrade skin. I've been using this uh, brown skin because I think it looks really good with the Iconian shield, which you'll you'll see when I go out into space. I think the uh, I think it kind of matches well, but honestly, a lot of these skins look really pretty great. Some of the other options you get here is um, you can choose between the Mogai, the Moragu, and the Valdor if you own it which I definitely recommend if you're going to get the ship, uh, get that Valdor for that two-piece. Um, I'll get the Valdor anyway, because it comes with the Valdor shield console, which is fantastic on every Romulan ship. But it lets you pick between the three for the bridge, for the hull. Let's take a look at the hull here. Maybe I can get a better angle. Not huge differences, just a slight different shape here in the middle section. For the nacelles, you can pick any of them. I like the Valdor nacelles. I think they have a cool uh, sort of vertical look to them. Um, for the neck, you can select the different ones. I like sticking with the Mogai neck because it has the interesting sort of <laughs> bridge that goes underneath it. Let's see, let's take a look at the wings here. You can look at all three different wings. The Morgu wings are pretty cool, a little more sloped, and they go down a little bit more. The Valdors are a little more straight, but they have um, they have the cool-looking uh, side wings that come up here towards the, towards the center. But I, again, I usually stick with the Mogai. I like... One of the things I like about the Mogai is it has the cool sort of struts that go across underneath the wings here and hold the hold the nacelles. I like that. All right, so there is the look of the ship. Let's go ahead and cancel out of here. Let's go here, and I'm going to turn back on my Iconian shield visual. And all right, so let's... Uh, head out into space. Let's start with an Argala patrol and see how the ship does. So here I can zoom in a little bit here. Let's hide the UI. So this ship, you can kind of see these uh, these shapes along here, the sort of oval shapes that comes from the Iconian shield and the Iconian deflector you can see here, the cone uh, that glows in the middle here. It looks pretty cool. I'm actually using the Valdor head, which I think is cool with the two little, uh, I don't know, two little sections that come out here that almost look like a jaw. And the, having the deflector come out of the middle there looks pretty neat. 
But you can see the brown color I think goes really well with the kind of the brownish red highlights from the Iconian set. So it's not your typical Romulan green color, but I still think it looks pretty cool to make it match closer with the Iconian set. All right, so there it is. Let's uh, let's head out into the Delta Quadrant and do an Argala run. So yeah, the only thing. Yeah, the only thing I'm definitely working toward with this build is that uh, putting more points into the pilot specialization for the uh, yeah for that pedal to the metal trait. I remember using a beam array build, um, especially on a ship like the like the Margo. Um, I do like to kind of circle around the enemy, um, and you can you know with full throttle uh, going, you get the the pedal to the metal trait damage bonus and you could be circling around the enemy. Um, sometimes keeping using a dual beam build is a little bit hard to keep them in your front arc when you're always at full throttle so I kind of like combining the beam arrays instead with a pedal to the metal build. I've actually been using that on my Nandi and I, I really love that on my uh, science character. I would like to try it here but I just don't have enough points yet in piloting to get that. And I just realized I didn't look at the stats of the ship while I was in uh, in the sphere space. Let's see if I can do it here without the. Let's see who did I get. Looks like Malon. Let's see if I can take a look here at the ship stats before the Malon close in on me. Hopefully they won't. So let's do this quickly. It has a 900 crew, which is actually quite a bit for a heavy warbird. Um, Power transfer rate that I'm getting is 13.8, so pretty good. Not not top, but um, it is a pretty decent power transfer rate. Hopefully that, along with my reduced, you know, energy drain, all the energy drain abilities are, uh, that I have going from the, you know the warp core, from the two piece bonus, from the traits, um, should keep my weapon power pretty well maxed out. Um, Yeah, for hull, I have 66,000 hull. Oh, there they come. 66,000 hull. Um, I believe the base is 44,000 hull. I'm not quite sure on that one. And if you're wondering why my resists are so low, that's because I am currently in... Uh, my anchor trade is going, and it's probably stacked up to four here now that I've been sitting for so long, so that's why my resists are so low. But you can see my crit chance is 31%. Inertia is 60. Uh, it's a very maneuverable ship, 16 degrees per second. I think the base is 14. So I'm getting 16 degrees per second and um, 60 inertia. So it is a very maneuverable ship. Um, and honestly, that's... Wow, the Benthans already killed one. It's part of the reason why I like that, sh like this ship. Or, well, I guess why I've chosen to fly this ship a little more lately is because of the um, is because of that maneuverability. I've honestly, as much as I love my scimitar, um, and I've flown the scimitar for a very, very long time on this ship. Uh, as much as I love it, it is a very sluggish ship, very sluggish to pilot, and. Um, which makes this ship just a lot more enjoyable to fly. You can see it is very maneuverable. Let's get that going. Let's get my Alpha going. Let's get Cloak. So as you can see, you can, if I had to, you know, pedal to the metal tr or tray going, it's pretty easy to strafe around, keep all of your beam, broadside beams all going on the target at the same time. Um, let's see, while I'm finishing out this mail on here, maybe I can, 
can see where I'm running my power levels. Of course, running maxed out, maxed out weapons power. I'm kind of keeping my mouse over here. I did see my. Yeah, you can see it's not dropping at all when my after I shoot my tachyon beam, which gives me the uh, three emitters trait. But I did see it drop down to 99 there once. It must have been right in the. Stay maxed out now, still. 25. Drops down to 120 every now and then. Um, so you can see, I think the build is working pretty well. It seemed to keep my weapons power pretty much maxed out, especially after when uh, Greedy Emitters is going. Um, See, as soon as this ship hits uh, override subsystem safeties, it just vaporizes everything. This is a really great build. I'm already liking this a lot. You can see where I run my power levels. Um, I do run, you know, minimized power into. Um, let's not go out just yet, but I do run a minimum power in uh, so, uh, shields and engines. Um, once emergency power to shields goes, and once my plasmonic leech is going, these both get up to 75, or go, you know, or well over 75. So that keeps my amp bonus from my warp core going, um, and it also auxiliary goes over 75 as well. So I'm getting uh, amp bonus for all four subsystems. All right, so let's head out of here. Now, I think the... I do like this ship a lot, like I said. This... Is it better than the, my Scimitar? That is hard to say. I mean, there are a lot of advantages and disadvantages of them. I mean, this one, obviously, much, much more maneuverable than a Scimitar. So that right there already makes it more fun to fly, in my opinion. But does it actually outperform it damage-wise? Um, let's... Before I do my little comparison here, Lon and I make sure I'm queued up for ISA. Um, yeah, so this is much more maneuverable than the Scimitar. Um, let's take a look at it here. It is, of course, you are, of course, missing that fifth weapon slot in your four weapons that the Scimitar gets, which is unfortunate. Um, definitely a disadvantage. You do get, um, probably the biggest advantage is that you do have intelligence seating. With that override subsystem safeties, I would say this probably, this ship probably comes quite close to the scimitar as far as DPS goes. Um, it also is, I guess, also missing the hangar bay so you can't run your Romulan drone ships like you can on a scimitar. So, I mean, there are trade-offs and advantages to both ships. But I, th at least for now, for, for enjoyment level, and for that intelligence seating, I, th I, I give it a slight edge to the fleet ship here. Seems okay tonight too. It's always a plus. Just give me a second here. I gotta go over out to combat log reader and make sure it's reading. Alright, back. We are the Bulwark. See the little green glow around my ship. I believe that's from the Iconian trait that's giving me self heals as I'm doing damage here. Curious to see how that ends up working out. Nope, oh, someone did blow one of the generators, so let's uh, head down here and get things rolling. 
Let's max everything out here. Ooh, I'm doing a lot of damage. Let's get another transformer. I do like to hit the transformer from this angle. As you can see, I'm getting the flank bonus. Oh man, I'm seeing lots of 20Ks there. That's what I like to see. Let's just not die here from this little pile of spheres. So it is a little risky to turret in this ship, um, but you can see the Baldor console is doing a pretty good job of keeping my shields up. But when I do have my uh, anchor bonus, go or bonus going, that is reducing all my resists. And this isn't the most tanky ship in the world. Let's see if I can get all three of these guys in my full beam. So far, so good. It's a good team. Um, at this point, I'm getting 36k. We've got another person in here getting 22k, which is pretty good. Another person getting 11k. So yeah, good, good team. It's, uh, okay. I was almost in range of that generator. I almost blew it. Cube here first before starting this. Although it's something else always seems to blow it anyway in that pug. Which I think someone just did, so. Let's head down here, take out the last two generators. Let's get the going. Get the tactical fleet up. And let's get this transformer targeted. Get the flanking bonus. There's some good damage, 17 to 20 Ks. Like that. Oh, not good, not good. Oh, let's use that. Let's use some Here's here to fall down. Probably should get a little closer, but didn't want to move and lose my anchor. Oh man, this is a fantastic team. You always gotta love getting into a good pug. You know. That makes all the difference. So let's head up here. I'm about to get this is probably gonna hurt. This might be a bad idea. Cube and the gate are shooting on me. This could be bad. This is my time to negotiate so I can get another tactical fleet on before the end of this. Reputation, maybe? Not, uh, not But yeah, this green bubble is definitely good. If you see one of these go up, get inside of it, gives you a nice, gives you a very large shield regeneration buff, and uh, even gives you a nice little, uh, I think, resistance rating as well. Let's check it out. Reduce damage to shield by 22%, so yeah, definitely stay inside that bubble. Makes you quite durable. Oh, that's not good. Not good. Let's roll. Let's see if I can use the green team. Hazard emitters. There's another going fighting. Oh, yeah. Subsystem safeties is up. Time to see the all oh, 30Ks. Oh, yes. Gotta love that. 
Now that was fun. That was a really good run. I enjoyed that. Let's put, give a GG for this team, which was really great. And... Yeah, definitely a good run. Uh, 45k DPS. I'm very happy with that. Yeah, 45k. That's uh, that's good. That's um, I think that's even a little higher than I got on my Nandi. So I'm going to head back to the Janolan Sphere here, and before I close out, I would like to just take a look at my combat log reader, so excuse me while I tab away here. Um, this frame rate might get a little bit choppy, um, but I do want to see heal abilities, so let's see. Let's take a look here. So I wanted to check out my healing abilities to see how much that trait was helping. So of course the Valdor console did the vast majority of my healing. 60% of my healing came from the Valdor console. Just an amazing console, get it if you're a Romulan. Um, a Blade of Hazard Shielding, um, that is the other console, did uh, decent, 11%. Um, I also like that one more just for the, because it's a good oh shit ability where when you're getting focused down you can pop that and get a nice um, shield buffer. And it looks like the next one was the shield refrequencer at 9.2 percent. Or no, sorry, energy refrequencer. And I, I think that's the trait, isn't it? What's the name of that trait? Energy refrequencer. So yeah, it did about 10 percent of my healing. So not bad. Not bad at all. Um, so if you're putting out a lot of DPS, this is uh, pretty solid hull heal. Um, yeah, it's hard to judge. I usually run a, a ox power defense for the extra tanky stats, so it's kind of hard to judge if which one would be giving me more of a benefit, but you know, extra hull healing is not bad at all. I'm gonna head in here just so when I'm looking at the stats I get a better or get an actual accurate uh, reading here. So yeah, the ox power, and you can take a look at my other ox power. It's only giving it 3% now, but when my plasmonic leech and everything is running, it would be a much higher um, damage bonus. And likewise for the defense, it would give me about 12% all energy and kinetic resists, and then the maximum hit points and, and uh, shield hit points. So yeah, I do like this defensive one, um, though this one is good too, so I mean this could be... Um, Kind of a toss-up there. I'm not sure which one I like better yet. I'll keep using this one for a while and uh, give it a good try. Oh, and just as a note, um, I'm talking about defensive traits here in the space. This last slot for my space reputation, but of course, if you want to go top DPS, go for enhanced armor penetration for your fourth uh, trait. Gives you the five percent armor penetration, which is you know, which is decent. So let me just quickly go back to, uh, sorry if the frame rate dropped again, I want to go back and look at Combat Log Reader and just, I want to see from as far as my damage goes. So Anti-Proton Beam Array Fire at Will 3 was 18, oh, sorry, 42% of my damage. Anti-Proton Normal Beams was 31%. In third place was Plasma Explosions at 17%. And then next was anti-proton beam array fire at will 2 at 8%. So there you go. The, having the two consoles in there, uh, the plasma explosions were effective. Um, honestly, I think that's probably one of the drawbacks of the ship. Only two science consoles. Um, I, the, on the Nandi, I know with the four science consoles, you can get your plasma explosion damage up pretty good. Um, just make sure you're running attack pattern beta, which, um, since that debuffs the enemy's resistance on their hull, I believe that also has a nice 
gives your plasma explosions a nice uh, damage boost as well. So make sure to run that attack pattern beta if you're running these uh, plasma explosion consoles. But there it is, folks. That is the the new Tier 6 Fleet Mogai. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.